Hello, my friends. So, so far, it's been every other year that I've recorded an episode all about getting ready for Purim and preparing our brains, <laughs> because trust me, I'm not the person to go to for Michelle Khamato's ideas. Um, we'll be focusing on brains today. And I've, I went back and looked and I've done two Purim episodes before. They will be linked in the show notes. I get uh, reminders, messages from people every single year about these episodes and and how they're using these ideas to enjoy the day much, much more. So I definitely recommend checking those out. I wanted to kind of give you two new tools to use for Purim. And um, so I thought I'd come on here and we, I was actually thinking of doing a rerun, but I'm like, no, I got new stuff for you. So we're going to do that today. So number one, I want to talk about the power of intentional thinking. I love getting curious about our brains. I love viewing our brains with compassion and curiosity and figuring out where did that thought come from and not making any of it a problem. But it can be very easy for me and possibly for you too, to get a little bit lost in that work. And I want to kind of bring back to the front burner, the idea of really committing to your thoughts. I like to think of it as mental discipline. For me, that's like a cool sounding phrase. If that to you sounds restrictive and miserable, you can for sure, submit, you know, uh, substitute whatever works for you. But the idea of catching ourselves when our brain wants to go down its old story that we know isn't serving us, it's not helping us. I'm not talking about one that like you're still working out or like you don't have any awareness about it. And so you don't really realize that there's any other way of thinking about it. I'm talking about, for instance, you know that when you get overwhelmed, you start, you know, scrolling and eating and sort of like detaching for people. And then you know that that always creates more overwhelm because you don't literally do the things that need to get done because you're busy avoiding your feelings about it. Okay. So like, if you know, you have that story. So one thing is to examine it and to remind yourself and to really get clear on how the thought that like, let's say my life is more than I can handle, isn't actually getting me anywhere. Another way of looking at it, another approach, which is very different, but is super effective. And I want it to be in your toolbox is to just say, I'm not going there. And you can do this. It's not invalidating your feelings. It's not saying you're wrong for feeling the way you are, but you have to remember your feelings do come from your thinking. So it's an interesting, even if you were, we were to step back and just, uh, you know, look at this concept of invalidating our feelings, our feelings, I think are always important but they are sometimes misguided. Like think about a kid who thinks there's a monster in the closet. Are her feelings invalid? No, because she's really, truly scared. But is there a reason for her to be scared? No, there's no monster in the closet, right? So where have we created monsters in our own closets? And then we're like holding on to that feeling. Like, don't tell me I can't feel that way. This is a very real feeling. So we for sure don't want to walk over to the girl and be like, well, you're dumb for being scared because there's no monster. Of course not. We don't want to do that to ourselves either right? But we do want to make sure to open up the closet and turn on the light and show her there's not a monster. So you don't have to keep feeling scared. There's nothing safe there, right? I coach on this a lot. And this is apparently going to be a tangent episode. (laughs) I coach on this a lot with resentment, with feeling unsupported, right? Like we want to hold on to it. Like you know, I have this experience that makes me feel really unsupported. Don't take that from me. And when we open up the closet and we look inside, we might notice that feeling unsupported makes me really rigid about what help I'm going to accept. It makes me really turn into like an isolationist and I'm not reaching out for help. It makes me really non-creative with other ways that I might make my life easier. And it makes me super focused on all the things that are hard for me. So then, okay, um, you're not wrong for feeling overwhelmed, but like you want to keep doing that, right? Like it's, it's not helping. It's not helping. And we can always create a monster in our closet over everything. Yeah. So what does this have to do with Purim? What this has to do with Purim is that I want you to make yourself just like you're making your Mishalach Manos and you're getting the costumes ready or your whatever it is that you're doing. 
I want you to also make an intentional thinking plan for the day. And this will take you from now till the end of this episode, probably like even halfway through the episode. Okay. What does that mean? I want you to commit to how you're going to think about this day. And I just want to warn you things like I can do it. I can overcome all obstacles. I don't recommend because the truth of Purim is that it is voluntary chaos. And for those of you who are a little type A and want to solve for the chaos of Purim, I just feel like do that every other day of the year, right? Let's just find the one part inside of us that is willing to just embrace, to turn it all upside down, right? Turn your type A into a type B for the day and embrace that chaos. And from that place of embracing the chaos, you can choose the thought, right? Like I'm willing to let this go, or I'm pretend I'm dressed up as a type B person today, or the most important thing about this day is X, Y, Z, not that everything goes according to my plan. And then when your brain wants to go back to, but he shouldn't be doing that, or I'm not getting the help that I need, or I'm feeling super overwhelmed, or I just hate today just for one day. And by the way, those of you who just have wonderful, beautiful thoughts about Purim, like please don't think you need to adopt any of these other ones. <laughs> no rules. You have to hate Purim. Just for one day, what if you make this day like a hardcore coaching mental boot camp for yourself? I challenge you. When you catch yourself being like, oh, Purim is so hard, just be like, nope, not today. Tomorrow, if I want to go back to thinking yesterday was hard, fine. Today, I'm just going to play with the possibility I'm just going to play, like try on for size. I love this. I'm all in. Let's go. Today, I don't care. I don't care about the schedule. I don't care about the mess. I don't care about the whatever the thing is. All the expectations that we create, and we don't do it intentionally. I know that you never intentionally sat down and said, here are all my expectations for how my husband's supposed to behave when he's drinking on Purim, or here's all my expectations for how much help I need to have, right? We certainly create expectations in terms of how the Michelle Khmanans should show up, turn out and how long our kids should stay in their costumes and the meal, right? For sure, we create expectations there because they come along with the planning, right? When we're planning, we're, we're envisioning, that's the word, <laughs> how we want it to look. And then we have to consciously then release that expectation, okay? I created the possibility for a beautiful meal. I don't know if the beautiful meal is going to happen. Okay. I created the possibility for delicious, adorable Michelle Achmanos. I don't know if they will turn out that way. You can decide now what you want your thoughts to sound like, what you want your thoughts to be like on Perm. By the way, this can also be leading up to Perm. Okay. Now I want to talk about the overwhelm piece a little bit. I'm not going to talk in this one about your husband helping. I think that I addressed that a lot in the last two episodes. So I'm just going to link that in the show notes if you want more there. Um, but I do want to talk about just the lead up, right? Because it's, you know, last couple of days when you hear this, if you're listening on schedule and I kind of, some of you are going to really hate me for saying this, but I, I kind of want to offer you that circling back to one of my very favorite tools and one of the tools that really, really has had such an impact on the women inside my coaching community, um, which is called planning versus execution. So I had a podcast episode on this and the whole concept of this tool, this is a time management tool that I love. That is we really, really intend is super simple. You really intentionally distinguish between planning mode and execution mode. Okay. So planning mode might look like deciding, you know, what day you're going to go to the grocery store, what things you're going to buy there, what's going to go to the Michelle Juanos. execution mode is I have everything on the table and I'm assembling. Okay. Execution mode. You want it to be so simple that you basically could listen to a podcast while you're doing it. Right. Like I'm just on, I'm on autopilot because all I have to do is just follow the list and check things off. Maybe if it's like a complicated recipe, don't do that. But you hear what I'm saying? Like execution mode is just literally executing on the plan that was already designed. Um, a quick warning, those of you who are going to be using, okay, so sorry, going back to what I was originally saying, I, I already started in this topic. Um, the thing you're going to hate me for saying, which I want to say to you is that I want you to consider using Purim, the last couple of days leading into Purim as your warm up sprint for your time management skill of planning versus execution, which you will be then using after Purim as you get ready for Pesach. And remember, we love Pesach. It's super fun, right? Do you remember that? Seder table. It's going to be amazing. 
face off is the best, right? So, but it does require a lot of planning and execution. So these last couple of days before Purim, make sure you are very clear. Are you in planning mode or execution mode? Because the biggest stress, the biggest emotional and physical exhaustion factor of getting ready for holidays or getting ready for Shabbos is the flipping back and forth between planning and execution. Now, sometimes you have to, because you realize when you're in execution, you forgot to plan, but I want you to very, very intentionally switch from your execution mode back to your planning mode, finish your planning, and then go back to execution. I'm telling you, this is a life changer. This will make the preparation so much more fun because all the work's been done for you. And now here's the warning I wanted to give you. And I'm sending this out in one of the emails. So if you're on my email list, which you totally should be, because I'm sharing so much fun content over there, just go to Kayla11.com so you can get on the list. I want to warn you that if you are buying a program or following a template or in a WhatsApp group to prepare yourself for Pesa, number one, beautiful. I love supporting Jewish businesses. I love that you're supporting Jewish businesses and I want you to get tons of inspiration. Number two, that does not substitute for planning mode. This is so, so important. Okay. Just because someone else put together a PDF of how to get ready for Pesach, I want you to take that with you as if you're taking a calendar with you, as if you're taking pen and paper with you to your planning mode. Why? Because when you start to execute on the plan someone else made, you will inevitably get to the point at which you cannot execute because it doesn't fit your unique circumstance and your unique life. Okay. So take the job that they're giving you, take the calendar or the checklist or whatever it is, or the book. And I want you to sit down with it and still give yourself that planning time. All right. I'm also going to link the planning versus execution episode here in this podcast. So if you haven't heard it or you want a refresher, you can listen to that. Now, getting ready for something as big as Pesach is going to take a little bit more than one planning session and one execution session, which is why we are going to completely hone this skill inside the How to Glow community. This is my online, super affordable, super unbelievably amazing group coaching program that you can join today at kayla11.com forward slash coaching. We are going to be focusing on planning versus execution and super, super honing this skill in the month of March. We're going to use a quick warm up getting ready for, for Purim. And mostly we're going to use this as we start. And I went, I'm, I'm specifically doing this early because the planning part can be done at any time. So much of the planning can be done early, leaving you then to go into execution with, you know, I remember one year I just bought the entire Harry Potter audiobook series and I just listened through because everything was planned and all I had to do was execute. And it was a treat. Like I was like excited to put my kids to bed and run down I, at the time. I actually had a Pesach kitchen, believe it or not. It was one year and it was glorious. Ran downstairs, got myself cooking because everything was there. Everything was ready. Everything just needed to be whipped into a cook-all, Right. So I want you to have that feeling, whether you have the Pesach vision or you don't, that you've had the time to do your planning. You've had your time to do your envisioning. You are so excited for what Pesach is going to be like. Like that's what planning mode gives you. Planning mode gives you that chance to get excited, to get creative, right? To, to have a vision of what you want. And then execution was awesome because then you can go listen to like 178 episodes of my amazing podcast. I'm like, for sure, you should be doing that. Or one of the other amazing ones, right? So we get to enjoy both things so much more when we go all in on both. And I'm going to work with you in March inside my program on how to navigate all the different things, how to go back and forth between planning and execution in a seamless way, and how to integrate this so that it becomes really a part of how you do your life. I think that execution mode gives us a chance to be in that state of flow, which, you know, as women, especially if you have young children and you get interrupted a lot, like that's a really delicious state state to get into. And there's so many external interruptions. I don't want you to have to have internal interruptions as well, right? So that you are able to take the advantage of those little moments of flow in your life and it's just amazing. I mean, it also does great things for your hormones, but I'm totally not going to go down that track right now. Okay, my friends. So these are my thoughts for you. Number one, create your contract. If you haven't done it already, just by listening to this, just decide right now, what's the one thing that you are giving up on, on Purim? Or what's the one thing you're committed? Like you might just decide you're only going to think positive thoughts about the people around you Purim day. 
you can actually do this, guys. It's like crazy. We think that we can't. We think like, no, someone will do something annoying and I don't you totally can. You'll just catch yourself, right? You actually can think this way. And all it means is that you don't make it a problem if a thought pops into your head, like, oh my gosh, they're so annoying. Like, wait a second. Nope. Drop it. Drop it. I used to have a dog when I was a kid. That's what I like, drop it, right? Just let it go. You're just not going to use that thought today. We're going to find a different one. You totally could do it. I can't wait to hear from you. You all have the most powerful brains. Do not underestimate how powerful and amazing your brain is and how you can give yourself this gift of choosing your mindset ahead of time, choosing how you're going to think about Purim ahead of time, and then enjoying it. And again, you don't have to commit to doing this for the rest of your life. Just play with it for a day. What an amazing experience that's going to be for you. And number two, this is your sprint. This is your warm up getting ready for the big day, the big Seder or two, if you live in Chutz Arts. And I want you to focus, be thinking about planning versus execution, how you can really give yourself the gift of separating the two. And if you want extra support in doing this, we'll be coaching every single week, except the week of Pesach, because of course that's vacation um, inside of the community. So you can join today, kayla11.com forward slash coaching. If you're not already in there, if you are already in there, are you excited? We're going to have such a good time. You guys have been asking for this month. All right. And I'll see you next week here back on the podcast. Have an amazing week, everyone. Bye-bye.